By Tillet, Thatched, Commercial. We're your high street insurance brokers for all types of insurance. Avoid faceless internet firms. High house insurance, do it face to face. See Neil and the friendly team at High Street Selsey. High house insurance, do it face to face. Or call Selsey 606 552. Hello, Mary Kennedy here, welcoming you to Selsey Internet Radio. This week... Nick has interviewed Anne Humphreys, who will tell us about the Outdoor Festival. David has been talking to Marcus about his work as a jeweller. We have gardening tips from Giles and a recipe from Lynn. Thea and Mike have been talking to Bob Hoare, and Hugh has our thought for the day. First of all, let me tell you what's on in Selsey over the coming week. Selsey Community Forum meet at the Academy at 4.15 on the 26th of March. Further information on the Selsey Internet Exchange website. Arts Dream Selsey's Arts Forum meets at 7 o'clock on the 25th of March in the Town Hall. Details on the website. The Sensory Art Project continues on alternate Thursdays at St Peter's Church Hall from 10.30 till 12. The next session is on the 27th of March. On Saturday 29th of March, East Beach Evangelical Church welcomes everyone to their ladies' breakfast at 8.45am. Please contact Jane on 601-945 for further details or to book a place. Selsey Academy's PTA hold their first car boot sale of the year on Sunday the 30th of March. Sellers from 7.30 and buyers from 8 o'clock and that's weather permitting. Selsey Cinema Club will show Blue Jasmine on Monday the 24th of March at 7.30. Tickets from the Town Hall, online or at the door. And tea dances continue every Friday from 1 till 3 o'clock at the British Legion. Don't miss Selsey's Football Club's match on Saturday the 22nd of March at 3pm. There are regular art exhibitions at Selsey Works next to the Town Hall and the shop in the High Street. And some advance notice, on Sunday the 1st of June there will be a D-Day commemoration. If you're interested in being involved with that, talk to Lynn Reeve at Tuppany Rice. Now, over to Nick. Hello, this is Nick Jones from the Selsey Internet Radio. I'm with Anne Humphrey at her hotel, the St Andrews Lodge, and I'm going to talk to her about a walking festival that she will organise with the Selsey Town team. So Anne, can you tell me any details of what you're doing? Uh, yes, um, as you say, I'm a member of the Selsey Town team and we thought up this event to try and promote tourism in Selsey and try and get people come down onto the Manhood Peninsula. Excellent, excellent. And, and try and get more people to visit. Fine. Since the Medbury realignment has taken place, there are a lot more walks available from Selsey. Yeah. Um, so you can actually walk over to Witterings and to Bracklesham. So basically it was set up to try and take advantage of the extra walking that we have in Selsey. We've got we've now got Medbury and also Pagham Harbour Nature Reserve. Yeah. So it's, it is a lovely area to walk around. The walking, it's called the Selsey Walking and Outdoor Festival and it's from the 5th to the 11th of May. So right. it starts after the first bank holiday in yep. May. Yep. The 4th of May is the lifeboat walk, so it's carrying on after that. So we're actually advertising the lifeboat walk in our leaflet as well. Right. We've got, let's see, we've got 16 walks. Some of them are quite short walks and some of them are longer ones. For instance, one of our walk leaders is doing a walk around all the railway carriages in Selsey. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, so it's sort of like a, a brief history yeah. of the railway carriages. We've got a long walk over to Bracklesham um, across the new memory mm -hmm. realignment. Oh, so anyone who hasn't been will be able to see that. They will. Right, yeah. super. We've also got a short walk which takes you just up to where the breach is so that people can have a look at that as yeah. well. We've got a walk from Pagan Village down into Selsey and various other walks just around the village, some to look at the blue plaques. Um, so you can actually learn the history of Selsey as well as going for a walk. Uh, we've also got two other events um, this year. One is uh, Steve at Summit Bikes. Yes, is, yes. Yeah, is organising a bike ride on the last day of the festival. Um, so that starts at Pagham Harbour and that's a sort of 10 or 12 mile bike ride. 
um, and you can hire bikes and helmets from Steve at Summit Bikes. And we've also got a snorkeling event um, arranged by Mulberry Divers. Oh yes, fine. Um, you do need to have been able to do some snorkeling, but um, if you ring up Mulberry Divers and they can give you information on that as well. Linda's very helpful there. She is, she? she's yeah. very good actually. At the moment we're getting all the tickets all the leaflets printed out, mm. but all the walks are only going to be two pounds. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's quite good value. But you, uh, but you can buy a season ticket. You will be able to buy a season ticket for the week, um, which will be slightly cheaper if you want to go on all the walks, and that covers the the diving of the snorkeling event and the cycling event. And also, you'll be able to book those online. Um, so that's going to be set up for you to book right. Them. And where will people be able to buy tickets from? They'll be able to buy them from the town hall. Right. Yep. Um, they'll be able to go there. That'd be the main place. Yeah, or, or, and also online you'll be able to find yes. tickets as yeah. well. Yeah. So we're getting all the leaflets printed out. We're taking them up to the leaflet exchange at Bognor Regis because that's this month. Um, and hopefully we'll get a lot more people coming down to see Selsey. The walking festival you're calling this? That's right. It's called the Selsey Walking and Outdoor Festival. Right. Um, and it's Dates again? From the 5th to 11th of May. Right. Uh, and on the 4th of May you've got the the sponsored lifeboat walk. So so really that's like at the beginning of yep. the Selsey Walking yep. and Outdoor Festival. Right. Yeah, so hopefully it will be a good week. That's fine, that's great. Yeah. Well thank you very much Anne. And I hope this has um, created some interest. Okay. So let's say again, um, the dates are the dates are the 5th to the 11th of May. Tickets available from? Um, the Town Hall and you will be able to buy them online. And the cost is? Two pounds per walk and also two pounds for the bike ride and two pounds for the snorkeling event. And they can also buy a season ticket if they want to do them all. Yeah, which will be slightly cheaper. Yeah. Excellent. Well, okay. thank you very much indeed, Dan, for your time. That's thank all you. Right. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you, Nick. And David's interview with Marcus. Good morning, David Kennedy for Celsius Internet Radio. I'm here with Marcus Hyde from MSJ Jewellers in the High Street. Good morning, Marcus. Good morning. Um, first of all, are you local to Selsey? No, I've lived here seven years now. Seven years, right, okay. And um, what made you decide to set up your own business? Basically I was maybe redundant from another jewellers and I thought it's time to do it myself. Right. So, uh, I had the skills, so... Yeah, I mean you're not a, a normal run of the mill high street jeweller as I call them that you just go in and buy a bit of stuff and they send it off if you need any changes you do everything yourself don't you You design that's correct design manufacture repair and obviously the retail side yeah, yeah. I mean we actually collect work from other shops so when other shops you take work into another shop there's a chance they'll send it down to me to repair it so. ah, a man of many talents how long have you been a jeweller 20 years I've been Making jewellery. Yeah, it's a long time. And where did you study? Locally or? Leicester University. Well, both me and the wife did a uh, three year degree in it. Oh, crumbs. Mm. So your wife's also she is. qualified yes. jeweller as well. Gosh. Are you going to bring your son up to be? <laughs> he's already on the bench. He's, he's got his own little job box with his jobs in there. He manages to change watch batteries. And How old is he now? Yeah? Five. Five? I must yeah. say, he only just watch batteries in my watches, though. <laughs> Yeah. Not customers. No. <laughs> All right, that's, that's good. He's taking an interest anyway. Yeah. Um, you say you make jewellery um, and design jewellery. What's the most interesting piece you've ever done? That would have to be a piece that I made for my mum for her Ruby anniversary. She saw a piece on Antiques Roadshow and obviously phoned me up and said, Did you see that? I said, No. She said, I'll send you a picture. And it was actually a Kaczynski ruby rose, which was probably about four inches long, um, 18 karat gold, and the bird of the rose is set with, I think it's about 150 rubies. It took forever. That is a, a lot of rubies it's to play around with. Yes. You could quite easily lose one, couldn't you, doing that Well, it's one around. of those jobs you do a little bit at a time, because yeah. after you set up like 10, you, you that's enough for today and I'll come back to it. What about down here? Have you done much down here in the way of manufacturing yeah. jewelry? Yeah, I've, I've had a few commissions. At Christmas I made a full ET diamond ring for a customer. Yeah, I'm getting nice little jobs every now and again. 
So you, you actually live in Selsey? I do, over in the uh, East Beach area now. All right, that's yeah. fine, that's good. And um, you enjoying it down here? I love it down here. Yeah. Good. I think it's a nice place to bring up a family. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Marcus. Pleasure. And um, we'll look forward to talking to you again sometime. Lovely. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Giles is here next with gardening tips. Right, we're coming to the end of March now then, Giles. So what have you got yeah, for well, us? Well, of course, March the 30th, as we all know, is Mother's Day, which is a sign, well, I was going to say sign, we know that is a, a very old-fashioned, old fashioned I think the nicest present, one of the nicest things you can give your mother is a posy of wild-scented primroses and violets, wild-scented primroses and violets, and it's, a, it's just what they used to do in the old days, and it's... I think it's on the par with all these modern treats you get in the shops myself. It yeah. comes from the house and you go out and do it from the countryside or the garden, preferably the countryside because it's more they're love they're more wild if you like. And then and then make her your mum or buy her or and then eat some similar cake in the evening because that again was yeah. always done in the old days. So I suppose that's what I'm suggesting on the thirtieth of March. Uh when when you can cover nine daisies with your foot it means that spring has truly arrived really okay <laughs> and people can start stepping around the garden soon and yeah. uh, see if they can do that uh, also now this time of year this time of month the blackthorn suddenly nearly overnight will suddenly appear with snowy profusion as if it's been absolutely brushed over by confetti it's so mm -hmm. quick and it's so wonderful to see this yeah. this this enormous lovely white white blossom on the on the uh, blackthorn and also some beautiful butterflies will now start appearing which is nice to see as well uh, in the garden uh, plant out if you've had any narcissi daffs or, or hyacinths flowering indoors which were given over christmas or um, you know, for whatever reason you've had them flowering indoors, mm. uh, plant them out now. Plant them outside in the garden somewhere because they will come up again. Yeah. And just apply a little uh, application of uh, maxi crop or of tomato fertilizer. Or okay. That will help yeah. them to come along. Uh, now we all also want to think about sowing broad beans, dwarf peas, parsley, lettuce, radish, and onion sets outdoors. Because so there's a lot to do now. If I, if, I, if I carried on now, we'd be you know, people would be working in the garden virtually seven days a week nearly now. If you want to force some rhubarb for early, for a bit of early, you know, early stuff, put put a, a chimney a chimney stack or a box or a pot uh, over over some of the rhubarb and then surround it with a with some manure. Yeah, right. And then you'll have a really early. If people want to eat rhubarb really early, then that's what they can do. Provide a house a home, a house, a home for wildlife. It's yeah. a little way to do it in the garden by placing some piles of logs, small piles of logs, not necessarily huge, it depends on the size of the garden, at, at the back of borders or in wild areas, have little piles of logs and leave them there and that will encourage beetles, toads, frogs, hedgehogs and other creatures. Okay. And also place a little bit of water nearby the logs. Right. So that's a little way of encouraging wildlife into one's garden. Another little idea for people with a small garden is make a pond from half a beer barrel, yeah. a wooden beer barrel obviously, a cask, to provide an effective water feature. And it will look really good in a small garden or even on a patio. Right. So that's a little idea, but people, it's just nice to have a little bit of water right. around in the garden. Yeah. If you grow garlic under roses, put a bit of garlic under some of the main roses you like, it'll make them smell sweeter. True? True, it will indeed. It's not just because of the smell of the garlic either. Okay. And, uh, uh, use the inside of an avocado yeah. skin, use it and it will, it will provide an excellent natural skin cream. You rub it on yourself. Yeah, rub it, on, rub it on your skin or your face, or wherever you feel, you know, wherever you feel like rubbing it. Just rub your hands onto the, you know, rub it on the inside of the avocado skin. Put it, rub it until it goes on your fingers, whatever, and then use it as a hand cream. It, 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 it's actually very effective. It's a natural skin cream, in other words. 
Does it work for you, John? No, I don't use it. <laughs> so I was just about to say if it did, if it, <laughs> it's not working. Yeah, right. Ah, I thought you'd say that. <laughs> so use a thin coating of freshly mown grass. Yeah. That's not yet because we won't be when you one starts mowing. Put a thin coating of freshly around cabbage and brassicas, and that will actually de help to deter caterpillars. Really? Yeah. Okay. Right, we'll bow out now, open the vents on warm days now, which we get a few, uh, but make sure you won't, it'll stop, it'll stop humidity and it'll stop temperatures soaring, which they can do very quick, but also make sure you shut it down, obviously, early evening. And and now, right, okay, spring has arrived, we come alive. Right. Thanks a lot, Giles. That's all right, thank well, you. Well, we'll talk to you next week in yeah, April. Yeah, we look right. forward to it. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Giles. And Lynn's recipe this week is for a good old favourite steak and kidney pudding. We're back in the snack shack. And once again, we've got Lynn here from Tuppany Rice. Morning, Lynn. Lynn, what have you got for us this week? Would well, you know what? A good old steak and kidney pudding, as opposed oh, to a pie. Right. Okay. Steak and kidney pudding's gone out of fashion a bit because of the suet pastry. Right. But I love it. And, and you know, you, there's, no, there's nothing better than bringing this beautiful pudding to the table after you've spent four hours cooking it. Okay. It's a real piece de resistance, it really is, and, right. and it's lovely. This is a this is an old recipe that I've taken from my mum's cookbook. Okay. And I know that she used to use this, and they actually used marmalade in it. Re marmalade? Yeah, yeah, which you can get from Tuckney Rice. Well, really cheap. All right. <laughs> anyway, the recipe, this is quite a long recipe, so bear with me. But if you do need it, then come into Tuckney Rice and we'll give it to you. Okay. So you need two rashes of smoked streaky bacon, some olive oil, Half a whole nutmeg, grated. Right. One teaspoon ground allspice, allspice, mixed spice, whatever you want to call it. Right. Four fresh Not bay leaves. Not the shaving lotion, anyway. Not the shaving <laughs> <laughs> Old Spice. They said if I was a spice girl, I'd be called Old Spice. <laughs> um, four fresh bay leaves, which I've got lots of them in my garden, if anybody wants any. Four sprigs of rosemary. Two onions, peeled and chopped. One tablespoon of Tuppany Rice marmalade. Three tablespoons of plain flour, four tablespoons of Worcester sauce, 750 mils of beef stock. Um, you can buy stock cubes today. Not many people keep their stock, do they? So you can buy stock cubes, yeah. beef stock cubes, any way you like. Two tablespoons of tomato puree. And then for your meat, you want 500 grams of chuck steak um, cubed. You want to dice it so get the butcher to dice it for you and 250 grams of pork or lamb kidneys. Right. All right, from Johnny the Veg Man, yeah. you want two carrots, six button mushrooms, okay? And then you also need um, some sea salt and pepper and 50 grams of cheddar or Stilton cheese, all right? I'm beginning to get really interested. Okay. For the pastry- What do you need the marmalade for? Well, I'll show you in a minute. All Hang right. on, let me get on with it. You, it just adds a beautiful little flavour to it, so just bear with me. So, in a deep pan, and if you've got a tin casserole dish, that's the best thing in the world to go on the top of your cooker. Yeah. You need quite a deep pan for this. Um, put some olive oil and fry, fry your bacon quite lightly until it starts to go a little bit brown. Then you add your nutmeg, your mixed spice, your bay leaf, and your rosemary sprigs, and your chopped onions. Mm. All right? Cook them for about 10 minutes until the onions start to go nice and soft. Then add your marmalade, some plain flour and Worcester sauce. All right? Yeah. Can you imagine all these flavours now coming up? Beautiful. Okay, yeah. Fry and stir it until it's gone quite dark. And then add your stock, yeah. your tomato puree and your diced steak. And then you're going to cover that and simmer it for about an hour. All right. Okay. Yeah. Now notice at this point you haven't put your kidneys in because you don't want to simmer kidneys for about an hour. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Not not at this point. You need your steak to go nice and tender so we get that on first. Then you put your flour, your butter, your suet and a pinch of salt into a bowl and with your fingers make it into like a fine breadcrumbs and rub it into the flour. Add about 100 mils of cold water um, I don't measure water and things, I just kind of drip it in until I know the consistency is right. So I believe it'll be about 100 mils by the time you've finished to form a soft dough. Cover the, cover with a cling film and stick that in the fridge because that's going to make your suet pastry. Okay. All right. Turn your attention back to your stew. And when it's had an hour, pour it into a colander 
over a large pan so that it drips down into the pan belly because because you want to keep that nice bit of gravy that you've got because it'd be nice and dark beautiful tasting gravy take out your sprigs of rosemary all right just because nobody wants to chew <laughs> chew a rosemary twig take out your bits of rosemary tear off a large sheet of greaseproof paper and put it into a pudding basin a nice boilable pudding basin okay all right grease the paper both sides right um, and line it into your basin it's about a 1.5 litre bowl dust your clean surface with some flour and roll out 80% of the dough so you're keeping back a little bit for the top obviously yeah loosely drape it over your rolling pin and push it into your bowl right, so that okay. some of it flaps over the top gently mix the diced kidney the carrots and the mushrooms into the stew that's in the colander all right so you're yeah. dicing that and putting them in the colander with your other stew lots season with your salt and pepper sea salt and black pepper is brilliant crumble in your cheese now you can use cheddar but i prefer stilton in this recipe yes all right it's lovely then pour the dense stew into your basin don't matter if it doesn't fill up you don't want it to fill right up the basin really if mm-hmm. you can help it so leave it a good inch or so below and roll up the last bit of dough and pat it on top and seal it all right okay put a sheet of buttered greaseproof paper face down on the top of that followed by a piece of tin foil Right. Then if you use about two metres of string, you can wrap it round the basin twice, mm-hmm. then make a loop and fasten it to the other side. Okay. So that you can actually, it makes it easier it to bring it out. Yes, it gives you a handle, it makes it easier to bring out of the pan. Okay. Then fill your saucepan that's obviously big enough to take your bowl, about two thirds full of water. Stick it in there and every so often you're going to have to top it up, this water. So you're going to yeah. need to keep an eye on it and you need to simmer this for about three hours. It okay. takes a while, yeah. all right, but it's so worth it. This pudding's beautiful. Yeah. When it's done, when you've had your three hours, pop it out, um, and about 20 minutes later, turn it over and carefully ease the pudding out. It should come out quite easily because you've greased both sides yeah, of the sure. paper. Um, and then you can pour your, heat your gravy and pour it over the top of the pudding. You can have that with some lovely veg yeah. or whatever you want, but it's a beautiful pudding. And I know it's not very popular these days, but hey, oh. now and again. Okay. Anyway, that's your steak and kidney pudding, Hugh. All right. Thanks a lot. What have what you got for us next week? I thought I'd do a plain spaghetti bolognese. How's that? Oh, yeah. All Something right. Something well, cheerful. I'll see you next week, then. Bye-bye now. Thanks, Lynn. That sounds good. Now over to Thea and Mike. Hello, Mike. Once again, you're going to tell us all the exciting things that are going on locally. What would you like to start with? Well, good morning, Thea. I'm just fascinated this week by how many things sort of happen locally. I gather there are, for instance, um, 170 different organisations and activities in Selsey. But I'm also fascinated at you know, the help we get as a community from people who come in from outside and we're going to mention both. Um, I wanted to begin with a reference to Bob Hoare who's um, a local man, been a, a caricaturist um, with an international sort of flavour for many years and um, at the moment is um, uh, exhibiting his uh, works in um, Selsey Works next door to the, 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 the town hall. Some of these caricatures of um, famous people are wonderfully lifelike and instantly recognisable and um, I'm actually working with with Bob at the moment on a project to um, get a special day at the cricket club on June the 8th when they're opening the exhibition in honour of Sir Patrick Moore so just to say really um, you know as a community Bob is a great um, local person and if people want to visit Selsey Works when they're perhaps popping in to get help with a CV or undertake a course or uh, look for a job, then his exhibition in the front uh, shop will be well worth a visit. Wonderful. Could you just once more point out exactly what Celsi Works is and yes. what it does? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's obviously fairly recent, probably now into its second month. It, it, it's, a, it's both a place where you can hold small group meetings. It has hot desks where you can go in and use a computer. There are people there to advise people looking for jobs so they advertise jobs they help with CVs um, they run courses um, that can be helpful to um, uh, job seekers and they have 
in their shop space the opportunity for new businesses perhaps to advertise for a couple of weeks or to do a pop-up shop or for local artists like Bob to uh, advertise and uh, uh, exhibit what they're doing. Now if you want to use this facility whereabouts is it? It's next door to the town hall. It's always open from 10 o'clock each day. There are a couple of staff there that you can uh, talk to or you can always phone them up but uh, they're always available. Do you have to make an appointment? Uh, no, generally yeah. you can you can pop in Just and, pop and in. someone will chat with you if they're free. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Good addition to that selfie is life. Good. Yes. And there are other things that are just as important. Well, I, I've just been um, uh, looking at um, some of the work of the friends of the Selsey Medical Centre, who in April on the twelfth, on the Saturday morning, are holding a spring fair, when they'd be grateful for support. Um, they uh, raise a lot of money, which helps to uh, equip our local um, medical centre. I was also struck reading the monthly parish magazine going through the list of their diary dates how very fortunate we are in in such a variety of local provision um, I, was, I was looking for instance at those who run sort of charity shops or boutiques like the the Selsey Scouts or uh, the, the Venture Club you know people who raise money for their organizations by their efforts um, can I interrupt there the Venture yeah. Club has wonderful boutiques yeah you can buy the most gorgeous clothes shoes you can buy bedding all sorts of wonderful things Mike so, um, so. I mention that particularly because they're there on a Wednesday morning and also on a Saturday morning yeah. and they're very popular so you want to get in there quickly. No, I think that's, um, that, that's really good. It's amazing these places you can visit on a Saturday morning and then during the week you can find friendship through things like the, uh, the Darby and Joan Club or the Crafty Natter Club oh, or yeah. the um, monthly coffee morning of um, Mind you can share in a whisk drive a whole range of uh, things that go on regularly every month in Selsey the Horticulture Society the History Society you know you name it you're interested you'll find it, it it's a lovely local provision we're, we're very Wonderful. grateful ideal for gossip yes <laughs> and we have things that are coming in from outside to help us to give us lots of new exciting opportunities yes I was I was struck by um, uh, a visit from uh, a new worker with um, Chichester District Council called uh, Poppy, a young lady who's been distributing some leaflets headed Want to Keep Warm and um, this is a facility for people to receive free friendly advice and support with things like energy saving devices in the home, uh, you know practical advice about the best energy deal and this is particularly for people who are over 60 or possibly disabled so it, it's really giving very practical help mm -hmm. which people can take advantage of through the summer and um, sort of be ready for next winter. Brilliant. I was also interested in something that begun this week and will be going on uh, once a fortnight over the next month or two this is called Time Aside Sensory Art and um, it's um, funded by uh, our County Council um, operating in St Peter's Hall on a Thursday morning and giving people the opportunity in a very informal and friendly setting just to express themselves in art and reminiscent sessions particularly for people in their third age. This was done before in the autumn and proved very popular. I hope it will prove equally popular as these folk come and help yeah. us. There's also another way of meeting new friends if you're a little bit shy this sounds ideal. Well, this has actually been advertised on the Selsey News and Gossip Facebook page as speed dating for the over 60s. <laughs> I'm not quite sure that that's what it is. Um, it's actually being sponsored by Guild Care, one of Worthing's largest um, charities, and paid for by uh, the Affinity Sutton Housing Association, who are sponsoring it. And uh, in April and May, it's um, going to provide in the Riviera uh, restaurant the opportunity for people over 60 to share sort of tea and chat sessions but 
in a rather novel way. So you, you perhaps sit opposite someone for a couple of minutes, have a little chat, and then move on to someone else. So the idea is to make a lot of friends quickly that you can um, you know follow up afterwards. I think that's um, brilliant. It, I can it, feel the play it, coming it's, on. Uh, it's, it's good sort of innovation, <laughs> I think. And, uh, no, really, this session is just really saying... It sounds like real fun to What you. a fortunate community we are locally and how much we're helped by those who come into us from outside. And have you nothing provide. else? Not at the moment, well, but I think that's enough to be going on with. I think so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thank you. And finally, Hugh's thought for the day. Thank you for listening. This thought for the day is from an anonymous poet, which I've titled The Greatest Love Story Ever Told. Though the cover is worn and the pages are torn and though places bear traces of tears, Yet more precious than gold is this book worn and old that can shatter and scatter my fears. When I prayerfully look in this precious old book, as my eyes scan the pages I see, many tokens of love from the Father above, who is nearest and dearest to me. This old book is my guide, tis a friend by my side, it will lighten and brighten my way. And each promise I find soothes and gladdens my mind as I read it and heed it each day.